Since 1999, the number of people who have died from prescription drug overdose has quadrupled. And more disturbingly, perhaps the most fatal abused drug today is legal and sitting right in the medicine cabinet in some homes. National Safety Council President and CEO Deborah Hirschman joining us live to talk about how we can prevent some of these deaths, what we need to watch out for, especially over the summer. Deborah, welcome. Good morning. I want to ask you about uh, the prescription drug problem as it relates to heroin. We've got a big heroin problem really in the entire country, here in Metro Detroit included. Um, explain to us the sequence of events that happens with these prescription painkillers and how that leads to a heroin problem. You know, Detroit's the car capital of the world and most people uh, think about car crashes as a leading cause of death or injury, but since World War II, this is the first time that something else has knocked car crashes out of that top spot and it's actually poisonings. We know that four out of five heroin users actually start on prescription painkillers and so this is a huge gateway drug to allow people to get that addiction because both heroin and prescription painkillers have the same base uh, which is opium poppies and so that chemical composition is very the same very much the same it makes it easy for them to transition all right deborah so uh, let's go back a step do are we are, are these drugs being over prescribed they are they're being over prescribed and so we do want to work uh, with our medical providers and make sure that consumers are educated we actually conducted a survey and when we asked people if they were taking prescription painkillers or opioids 29% recognized that they were, but that number shot up by about 15% when we used brand names like Percocet, Vicodin, Oxycodone, so um, Oxycontin or Hydrocodone. So we know that people don't know sometimes what they're taking, and so it's really important to have that conversation with your doctor about what you're taking, how much of it you need, and if there are safe alternatives. And if you do have to take a painkiller, you had back surgery and you have to take it there has to be some strict guidelines where you understand that this is a highly addictive drug and once you're done with it it needs to be disposed of properly so it doesn't get into the hands of teenagers absolutely you're so on point um, people may take these drugs but the best advice is really to do it for a very short duration of time to manage that acute pain um, and also to talk about other alternatives that can be just as effective but not as addicting. And the last thing that you mentioned was uh, making sure that you protect them if you do have them. And so keeping them secure. We wouldn't just leave heroin lying around. We know that four, uh, that 70 percent of um, users actually get these drugs, these painkillers, from family or friends. So it's really important to secure those medications. Deborah, just one last quick question. How do you know if you yourself, if you are addicted, if you become an addict, or if a family member is becoming addicted to these drugs, is there a telltale sign? You know, people um, who are addicted um, will be taking those prescriptions, they'll need them, and they will probably start taking more of the drug to get the same effect. Taking them for a very short duration of time is really advisable. Once it becomes a chronic thing, then you've got an addiction. All right, you have to be so careful. Deborah, thank you so much for the information. Important to keep talking about it to get the message out there because who knows, sometimes we uh, have those prescriptions in our medicine cabinets and we forget about it and uh, they're there for someone to take. So thank you. Thank you. And this interview brought to you by the...